Hi, I'm Dustin Harder, and this is The Vegan Roadie. The Amalfi Coast is a stretch of coastline on the Tyranian Sea in the province of Salerno in southern Italy. Known for its production of lemoncello liqueur, as the area is a cultivator of lemons, or limoni in Italian. The lemons are grown on terrace gardens all along the coast between February and October. Beautiful weather and the gorgeous blue-green sea made the Amalfi Coast the perfect setting for the 2017 blockbuster hit Wonder Woman. The production designer actually scouted over 47 different countries before finally choosing the Amalfi Coast as the backdrop for the Amazon island of Themyscira, the birthplace of Wonder Woman herself. They actually filmed right here in the Villa Cimbrone Gardens. Perhaps while I'm here, I'll get in some Amazonian training and I too can be as powerful and wondrous as Wonder Woman herself. But for now, on to the food. I'm the Vegan Roadie and I have one mission. To keep it vegan while on the go. I'm feeling a little heavy from all the eating I've been doing on my travels, so I'm on the specific search to find something light and healthy as I start out my day. I believe I've found just the place. Casa Bottega focuses on healthy, local, and fresh food. They are located seaside, making this the perfect place to start your day off right. You can unplug and enjoy the view, or get out that phone and make all of your friends jealous on Instagram. The decor is lovely and the ambiance is calm and chic. I was drawn immediately to the Liquid Sun Smoothie with spinach, cucumber, celery, lemon, green tea, and goji berries. Tell me about the Liquid Sun. I chose uh, the Liquid Sun because uh, I like the, the, the colors. And second, because uh, inside there is all the green vegetables that we have in our kitchen. I rarely order a veggie sandwich, but Tanina said I had to try the Casa Bottega Vigano sandwich, and she wasn't wrong. Piled high with tomatoes, cucumber, walnuts, and avocado, I was glad I took her advice. Why is it important to have vegan options on the menu? I don't like to eat meat and some uh, animals. I love too much. Tanina is actively expanding her menu with the hopes of offering an entirely plant-based menu eventually. She does it all. You can eat as clean as you like here or indulge in one of her vegan ice creams or milkshakes if you wish. The choice is all yours. And now I'm fueled to start my day. Let's get moving and head further south towards Chilento. Pizza! You know I couldn't stay away from it for long, especially when I'm in Italy. I'm so excited I'm going to meet up with Fabrizio De Rosa, the owner of Ristorante Pizzeria Nascondillo here in Rocca di Spide. He's going to put me to work making some authentic Italian vegan pizzas. But first, a little pizza history, shall we? Pizza started in ancient times when different cultures produced flatbreads with toppings. Modern pizza developed in Naples when tomato was added to focaccia in the late 18th century. The word pizza itself was documented in 997 AD in Gaeta and successfully in different parts of central and southern Italy. Pizza was primarily consumed only in the country of Italy up until World War II when Allied troops stationed in Italy came to enjoy the deliciousness that is pizza for the first time. And from there, pizza has taken over the world. It is hands down one of my favorite foods, and I know I'm not alone. Now let's get to work at Ristorante Pizzeria Il Noscondillo. Fabrizio and I got down to business right away, stretching out the dough that was made 24 hours in advance and kneaded three times within the 24 hour period. We started things off with the popular Napolitano pizza a signature that hails from Naples but is found all over Italy with tomato sauce, oregano, olive oil, and olives. 
Next was the porcini mushroom pizza. It was made with a layer of porcini mushroom puree, topped with chopped porcini mushrooms that were seasoned with olive oil, salt, and pepper, finished off with crushed walnuts. This one might have been my favorite. So good. <laughs> so good. I'm a one man, all you can eat pizza machine, but I'm not done yet. The insulatona starts by topping the dough with oil, salt, and oregano, and then transferring it to the oven. While it's baking, we dressed a fresh salad with some olive oil. When the pizza was bubbly and crisped, we removed it from the oven and topped it with the fresh salad. The pesto pomodoro is not to be missed, slathered with fresh basil pesto, baked until crisp, and topped with freshly chopped Campania tomatoes. The ortolana pizza, or the gardener pizza, is traditionally served with mozzarella, so be sure to ask them to hold the mozz, but you can count on a tasty helping of zucchini, eggplant, and peppers on top, along with whatever other vegetables are in season. Who needs cheese? A great place with a wide variety of pizzas for your crew to choose from. You can't go wrong with Ristorante Pizzeria Il Nos Condillo. I wanted to check out the Castel Chibita Caves while I was here, also known as the Spartacus Caves. Story goes that the Roman gladiator himself used the caves as shelter during his march from Brundisium to the final battle at Solaris River. Situated in an area near Val Calor River and close to the western side of the Alberni Mountains. I've worked up an appetite exploring these caves and now I gotta find something to eat. Lucky for me, there's a place right outside the caves called Casa Chavitas with a few really great options and another place right up the hill. I decided on Taverna de Antica Sapori up the hill because they grow, harvest, and dry all of their own beans. The Catrone bean, grown specifically here in the town of Catrone. Taverna de Antica Sapori not only uses the beans they harvest in their own dishes, but they also sell them all over the world. Michelle Obama actually spread the word of these berry beans, giving Kate Middleton the inside scoop. Not only incredibly unique and delicious, this bean has a very thin skin compared to other beans, making it more digestible. This area is also known for their pepperoni. I just had to try it. Pepperoni means red pepper. Mm. This restaurant has something for everyone, but if you're looking for plant-based eats, you will be pleasantly surprised with an array of dishes that are naturally vegan from the get-go. Like the Controna bean soup, made with a flavorful yet simple broth of water, olive oil, and salt, topped with toasted spicy bread. Everything is seasonal. I asked for a vegan dish and the chef prepared this basic dish that was bursting with flavor. Thanks to the seasonal ingredients of escarole and the Controna beans, seasoned with oil and garlic. Naturally vegan and locally sourced. Who could ask for anything more? I've got some sightseeing in and my belly is full. It's time to get a move on. Andiamo. I've now moved on to the town of Castellabate in the province of Salerno. I'm told there is yet again another restaurant focusing on seasonal ingredients that I have to try called Divino. I'm hoping we get to chat with the chef. And after that, I would like to move on to another place called Legate. The view is supposed to be breathtaking overlooking the water on the port of Santa Maria. Divino offers a menu that constantly changes, presenting the freshest ingredients the coast has to offer. The owner, Luciano De Ponte, prides himself on creating appetizing dishes that he says are only elevated beyond meat dishes thanks to the flavor of vegetables. Luciano says he can create the brightest and tastiest of dishes with the vegetables cultivated in the area. I love seasonal food. It's fresher, meaning it tastes better, and it also just happens to be higher nutritional value. 
What do you love about cooking with seasonal ingredients? My dear friend, you come in a just nice place. In general, we do all the vegetables of the season. See, si. We start with the zucchini flowers. Mm. We continue with the pepperoni. All the time we have something fresh from the nice place that you can see outside. Zucchini flowers were all Luciano could talk about on my visit, and he put them to good use. The first dish created was a delicious helping of slow-cooked zucchini, zucchini flowers, and potatoes, with just a touch of saffron. Carefully prepared with love from the team in Luciano's kitchen and seasoned to perfection. As the vegetables simmered away, the crew used the broth that was made from the water content of the vegetables to create a risotto. Of course, the gorgeous and delicious zucchini flowers were mixed into Luciano's traditional risotto to create the perfect finish. And what about the antipasto? I almost forgot that Luciano started me off with a stunning plate of grilled peppers, zucchini, and eggplant. The antipasto verdura misto. Perfect to start your dinner off with. If you happen to be a table of two, there is one lone table on a tiny balcony overlooking the coast that absolutely cannot be ignored. At this table, I promise you will be served the meal and view of a lifetime. All three of these dishes are divine, which is what Divino stands for. You must eat at Divino when you're on the Cilento coast. And be sure to take a picture of your dish and post it on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and tag me at the Vegan Rodi so I can see what's in season when you're here. Legate serves up something for everyone with a dedicated vegan pasta and appetizer offering every day. But this place is just as much about the food as it is the view. Watch the sights unfold before you. Take a walk on the beach and then relax at Legate. With yet again, a spectacular view of Cilento. The setting is perfect for a romantic dinner or sipping a Prosecco with friends while you watch the sun go down against the flawless Santa Maria Harbor backdrop. Pro tip, get a seat up on the balcony for the full view. There were only a couple vegan offerings, but it didn't matter. With a view like this, I'd be happy to eat cardboard, as long as it's vegan. But tonight, I'm having the spaghetti pomodoro. I love spaghetti pomodoro, as it tends to be on the lighter side of pasta options in terms of sauce. And the gates did not disappoint. With the impeccable balance prepared with olive oil, fresh basil, and perfectly plump tomatoes. I can't imagine coming to Cilento and not taking advantage of this view. Just because you're vegan, you shouldn't miss out on anything. <laughs> Mountain Potato. I'm here in Padula, a town in Salerno, where I've been invited to Villa Cosalinum, where they're going to share with me some dishes they make with the mountain potato. I love potatoes just as much as I love pizza, so I'm in. Villa Cosalinum is not only a hotel, they also have a restaurant on site and they make four course vegan lunches based on their mountain potato. What's so special about the mountain potato? Ah, la patata rossa di montagna è speciale perché viene coltivata a 1100 metri in una natura incontaminata ed è una patata che non assorbe olio. Quindi fritta è la sua specialità. Start things off right, just as Davide suggests, with a serving of freshly fried potato crisps for the table. Then perhaps in order of oregano. Baked bread with peppers, oregano, and olives, served with grilled vegetables. And of course, they make a potato gnocchi with the mountain potatoes, tossed in a succulent red sauce, fresh basil, and olive oil. As mushrooms were in season on my visit, the chef was insistent I have the porcini mushroom pasta dish. Served up piping hot, with handmade chilentana pasta and porcini mushrooms with fresh truffle. They make their own liqueurs on site as well, from grappa and apple to the Italian favorite lemoncello, perfect for an after-dinner sip. Ah. 
a roof over your head, and easily fed. That's what you get with Villa Cosolinum. Now let's head on over to Zaire, a restaurant in Sassano where the vegan menu keeps expanding. I've heard pretty good things about Zaire. Let's head inside and see if it's all that it's cracked up to be. At first glance, I was concerned as the menu was full of meat and fish offerings, but then I found the vegan contributions and I was delightfully surprised. Apparently, the owners of Zaire continue to get high demand for vegan options from tourists passing through town, and they keep expanding the menu to make sure there is something to satisfy every palate. I stuck with an antipasto so I could try a little bit of everything. I'm most excited about these zucchini flowers stuffed with vegan cheese and deep fried. But that's not all that came on this plate. It was loaded with traditional local favorites that have been veganized with ease, like seitan and broccoli rabe with paprika, potato and green bean salad with baby tomatoes, chickpea with farro and celery, grilled potatoes and red peppers, grilled pumpkin with olive oil, and the most delicious bean puree made from local Tondino beans and topped with toasted bread. Genuine cuisine with a wide variety for the vegan traveler. Everything lived up to expectations at Zaire. Now let's get Cooking with the Familia. I'm really excited about this one. This episode's Cooking with the Familia takes place in an area called Felito, in the city of Salerno at a restaurant by the name of Lacchino. Renata Zamarelli is a Chilentano, born and raised in Chilento. She serves as the private chef for the tour company Vegan Travel Club, hosting large groups of tourists when they come through town with authentic meals created with ingredients that she forages herself in the National Park of Chilento. Renata invited me to Lacuno today to meet a few of the mayors from surrounding towns to discuss the benefits of a vegan diet. Renata wanted to host the meal here because the kitchen and restaurant is run and owned by a fellow Chilentano who also harvests and forages her own ingredients. I'm so amazed at what you do and I'm very touched you've invited me and you're sharing your world with me. What are we making for dinner this evening? Ciambotta. What's in the ciambotta? Uh, potato, egg, plant, basil, pepperon, zucchini. Renata and her team went to work preparing the vegetables, washing and cutting them up. Once all of the vegetables were prepared, they were sautéed in four different pans. Well, more than sautéed. They were basically fried. Story goes, back in the day, Chilentanos used excessive amounts of oil to preserve the final dish, so it would last for days on end, conserving ingredients that were seasonal and allowing Chilentanos a meal they could have throughout the weeks as the seasons passed. Some traditions never change. Once the veggies and potatoes were cooked, they were all mixed together and seasoned just right and finally topped with fresh basil. And then the mayors and representatives from each town arrived with tables showcasing what each of their communes were known for. Rocca de Spida was known for chestnuts, Felito for fresh herbs and spices, Castel San Lorenzo had a variety of wines that they sell all over the world. In Cilento there are many plates, naturally vegan. And finally I reached the last table, Trentignara, known for their delicious bread. I broke bread with all of the mayors and tried some of the fresh olive oil from Rocca de Spina. Once I got to know everyone a bit, I sat down with the mayors to enjoy the chimpota and some other dishes Renata whipped up quickly. This experience has been unreal to meet so many people who are actively working together within the community to create a healthier and more compassionate society on such a high level is inspiring to say the least. The scenery in Cilento paired with the ingredients are unlike anything I have ever experienced. When you plan your trip to Italy, it would be a shame if this gem weren't on your itinerary. It's a diamond in the rough you don't want to miss. But you know I'm not gonna leave you out of this fun. Let's get busy with the five ingredient challenge. So we made ciampota in Cilento. Let's break it down five ingredient style. 
Your five ingredients are one zucchini or four baby zucchini cut into planks, one green bell pepper cut into strips, half cup olive oil, one tomato diced, and one potato peeled, cubed, and parboiled, adding salt, pepper, and garlic powder to taste. As I'm sure you noticed, the authentic Italian version is quite heavy on the oil. While I'm not afraid of oil, I do try and be a little conscious of how much I use. For that reason, we're going to parboil potatoes for this recipe to avoid deep frying them in a vat of oil. Boil the potatoes for about five minutes or until just fork tender. You don't want them to be mushy. Drain and set aside. Add two tablespoons of oil to two different skillets and warm the oil over medium-high heat. Add the potatoes to one skillet and the vegetables to the other, and cook for about six to eight minutes until the vegetables are just tender. Mix everything together in a large bowl or pot and season with salt, pepper, and garlic powder to taste. I'm using powdered garlic in this recipe simply to stick to the five ingredient challenge, but I encourage you to use fresh garlic in yours and just mince it up and throw it in with the vegetables when you're sauteing them towards the end, the last minute or so. Once everything is well combined, have it on its own garnished with basil or serve it with pasta, bread, or salad. Let's just say this one is inspired by the Cilento Cimpota, but it's still really easy to make and hits the spot. But if you want the real deal, you've got to grab your passport and head on over to Cilento. Until then, go over to veganrody.com and get this recipe. Recreate it and show me what you make on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, tagging me at the vegan roadie with the hashtag Kailed It. For even more vegan roadie recipes, be sure to get my new cookbook, The Simply Vegan Cookbook, at amazon.com and everywhere books are sold. I've had a wonderful time just barely scraping the surface of what the Amalfi and Chilento Coast have to offer. Be sure to click subscribe and share the Vegan Rodi YouTube channel with everyone that you can, any way that you can. I hope your appetite is satiated, but be sure to save some room and join me for the next episode when I journey off to Matera and Puglia. Until then, keep on cooking and remember, it's nice to be nice. <laughs>